Welcome everybody to another YouTube exclusive Dong and Romp episode. We fell into the trash heap and uh, we gotta get all the garbage smashers shut down on the detention level. I don't know what's going on. Let's find out. Here we go. Is that an airplane? How'd something like that wind up in the school's garbage pit? It's probably one of Monokuma's uh, punishments. That's a rocket and a tank? I better not think much about what I'm seeing down here. We do remember the tank, right? Oh no, there was no tank. But yeah, these probably would be from punishments. This is a desk. It's probably the one that fell down here with me. I love how he says it's so dark, but it's like perfectly lit. <laughs> it's locked. No matter how many times I pushed or pulled or kicked at it, it didn't budge. Getting out of here isn't gonna be that easy. Well, if I'm not getting out of here anytime soon, I decided to look around for some food. There's plenty of food here, but it's all rotten. That was pointless too. Next, I searched for some water. How can I be sure with liquids I can drink and which ones are an all around bad idea? Again, pointless. I feel like I'm blocked on all sides, but that's still not enough reason to give up because, because I'm still alive. And as long as I'm alive, I'll never give up. After making that proud declaration, the next thing I decided to do was go to sleep. My sleep was deep and uninterrupted. That was my only way to preserve what little strength I had left after not being able to eat or drink. I can't be sure, but I think that at least a full day had to have passed. And all I did was sleep and sleep. It was like I was waiting for some kind of sign to come falling out of the sky. However, what, I, what fell from the sky wasn't a sign. Well, not exactly. What the? The strange sound pierced my silent isolation, jarring me awake. As I watched, the pile of garbage jostled and formed an odd shape. Did something fall down over there? Something fell from up above. What could that have been? So maybe this is where the trash compactor thing goes? Did a giant piece of trash just fall down here? I carefully stretched my hand out toward whatever it was that tumbled down here with me. Just a giant piece of trash. Rude. Before she even emerged from the pile of garbage, I knew who it was. Eh. Cup Goku Big? <laughs> this place smells awful. K Kyoko? Yeah. You look like you're doing better than I expected. What are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm here to help you. Well, I'm glad to hear that, Kyoko. You got a bit of garbage in your hair, though. She gave her head a quick, sharp shake to get rid of the trash, then faced me again. Yeah. First, I have something for you. Go ahead and eat it. We can talk once you're finished. Thank you. I snatched the bread and water she was holding out for me. Within seconds, it was in my mouth and making its way towards my stomach. I didn't really need to know how what the details are about how food is eaten. Whew, that really hit the spot. Now I got all the energy I need to keep going. <laughs> so you haven't given up then? Of course not. After all, the fact that I can keep going forward is about all I'm good at. <laughs> well, that's not so bad, such a bad thing to be good at. There's an unbelievable amount of trash here. But Kyoko, why did you come here? Why did you come to rescue me? <laughs> to pay a debt, or no, to atone. Atone. During the trial, even though you knew I was lying, you didn't say anything. So you knew that I knew. Yeah. But even though I knew, I did nothing to help you. I abandoned you. Don't say that. You didn't abandon me. No, that's exactly what I did. I abandoned you in order to save my own life. You were trying to save me, and I couldn't bring myself to do the same for you. But listen, not that I'm trying to make excuses, but... There was a reason that I had to survive, no matter the cost. <laughs> Well, why did you have to survive? So, I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything. The reason I have to survive so, is so I can do what I came to this school to do. What? I made up my mind to come to Hope's Peak Academy for one very important reason. So you have some reason for coming to Hope's Peak? Yeah. That's right. At least I did. Once. Once. Until recently, I'd forgotten what it was. You forgot, but that's... 
I had no memory of what my purpose was. No memory, that's impossible. Amnesia? Then is it really true? You lost your memory? Do you remember, Makoto? Do you remember the first thing that happened to each of us as soon as we arrived at this school? The first thing? You're talking about when we fainted, right? I fainted and when I woke up I was trapped here. So you. I fainted too, and when I woke up, I noticed a strange feeling of separation within myself, a disconnect. Thinking back on it now, at that point my memory was gone. At that time, I'd forgotten. I couldn't remember why I'd come to this school, and I couldn't remember what my ultimate ability was. But what would make you forget all that? Ne. Strange, isn't it? It's hard to imagine it happened by chance. It seems much too convenient. Are you saying you think you lost your memory because... So you. I don't think. I'm positive. It was the work of the mastermind. They stole my memory. But why would they want to do that? There's only one reason I can come up with. Because of my purpose and my ability. Somehow they would interfere with the mastermind's plans. So the mastermind just stole them from you? Demo. And it could also mean... Somehow, my memories may be connected to the mystery of this school and the mastermind, which is why I have to get them back. That's why I've been investigating things by myself this whole time. But if what you say is true, why didn't you ask the rest of us to help you? Nande. If I did that, and we all worked as one, the mastermind would have noticed right away. Plus, there's always the chance that the mastermind is actually one of us. What? So. Well, don't make too big of a deal of it. It's just a possibility. But since it is a possibility, we can't ignore it, right? mastermind one of us if she believed that then of course she couldn't trust anyone around her in which case it only makes sense that she would look into her missing memory by herself Demo. that being said there was a limit to what I could do by myself which is why I asked you to help me but why me <laughs> because among everyone you were least likely to be the mastermind that was just intuition but uh, I see your intuition was right though there's no way an ordinary kid like me could have been the mastermind <laughs> I understand. I should understand everything. Oh, whoops. It's just like the dream I had before, but why did that just happen? Uh, are you okay? Oh, yeah, it's nothing. It is nothing, right? Even now, I still trust you, you know. It's just, I'm not used to relying on others. I know I never asked you for help the right way, so I understand if you're not convinced. Honestly, I was convinced. I think that's just her personality. You say you had a reason for doing all that investigating on your own. So how'd that turn out? Were you able to remember anything? Soreba. I think there's still a lot I don't remember, but at the very least, I was finally able to recall my purpose and my ability. You mentioned your ability. My ability, what everyone should have known me for. I'm the ultimate detective. Could have uh, probably figured that one out. The ultimate detective. So. And the reason I came to Hope Speak Academy, there was someone I had to find here in the school. You had to find someone, who? So. Well, it was the headmaster of Hope's Peak. The headmaster? Why did you want to find the headmaster? Because he's my father. What? Tsumari. I was separated from him as a child. As it turns out, he became the headmaster of Hope's Peak. Kyoko's dad is Hope's Peak's headmaster? Then that explains when Alter Eagle told us how he thought the headmaster was involved. I'll find a way. Huh? No matter what it takes, I will find the headmaster. No matter the cost. Uh, Kyoko, what's going on? My memory hadn't come back at that point. But when he said that, I felt strange. It makes perfect sense now, of course, since my whole purpose for coming here was to find him. Well, it does make sense. Yeah, kiddo. But listen, Makuro, I want to make this perfectly clear so there's no misunderstanding. I said the headmaster wasn't the mastermind, but I didn't say that to protect him. I only said what I felt based on what I'd seen when I snuck into the headmaster's room. Then what did you see in there? Soreba. The room had been ransacked. The shelves were a mess. The desk drawers were dumped on the floor. The only conclusion is that someone who didn't know where anything was had been in there. You mean the mastermind, right? So. That was my assumption, yes. And to confirm my suspicion, I decided to investigate the second floor of the dorms using the key I found. But why there? Because I also found this in the headmaster's room. Is this some kind of map? Yeah. It's a layout of the entirety of Hope's Peak Academy. 
I found it in the headmaster's room, along with Lucaro's profile in that key. The map showed that the second floor was home to a number of rooms meant for faculty use. Some of the staff must have used, had to stay overnight from time to time. And I figured the headmaster would have some kind of private room there. I assumed that if that were true, that room would likely hold more clues, so I went to check. So. And that's when I finally remembered. I remembered that my purpose was to find the owner of that room. So you went there to see if the headmaster really did have a private room there. But once I got there, I noticed that the second floor of the dorms didn't have any cameras or monitors. So what was it like? That part of the school, I mean. It's hard to describe. All I can say is, the moment I saw it, I realized. Whatever's going on in this school is more horrific than we ever imagined. What do you mean? I can't explain it. You need to see it for yourself, and I'm sure you'll get your chance soon enough. Sounds like it must be important, and really ominous. Of course, once I got to the second floor, there were no cameras, which is why I had no idea what was going on in the rest of the building. It has to do with Mukuro Ikisawa, doesn't it? Just to be perfectly clear, I didn't kill her. And I know it wasn't you, either. I know you're right, but that just means everyone but you and me had an alibi. So then who did kill her? What I can say for sure is that the mastermind is directly involved. To begin with, the point of the class trial of Mukuro Ikisawa was to get me killed. Get you killed? I stole that key and disappeared, and in retaliation they wanted to draw me out and eliminate me. That was the point of the class trial. It was? The mastermind knew they couldn't interfere directly. You mean because of the school regulations? So you. Exactly. With minimal restrictions, you are free to explore Hope's Peak Academy at your discretion. The mastermind is adamant about following the rules, and with that rule in place, they couldn't step in. Since they couldn't kill me themselves, they tried to use the class trial to do it. The mastermind couldn't step in because of the rules. That makes it sound like the mastermind themselves is somehow bound by the school regulation. Ne. There's one other thing I'd like to point out about the murder of Mukuro Ikisaba. But what's that? There was a point where Mukuro may not have become the victim. It could have been you, Makoto. I could have become the victim? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? Do you mean... During the night? I can hear them, you know. The footsteps of the God of Death. What? I can hear the God of Death as he moves. That ability naturally draws me into cases just like this. Which is exactly what happened with you. I was in the dorms and I had a sudden sense of dread. I looked down the stairwell and I saw a white shadow cross the corridor. I gave chase right away. As I followed it, I saw the shadow go into your room. So. I ran into your room and I saw what was happening. I intervened immediately, of course. That wasn't the end of things, though. I stopped them, but that led to... Whoever the masked assailant was, they ended up dead. So. And their murder was disguised, and the dojo key wound up in my room. It all has to be the work of the mastermind in an attempt to use the class trial to eliminate me. So all this would mean that whoever the killer, whoever killed Mukuro is also the mastermind. I don't have any conclusive evidence, but that's what I think. But that's really bad if true. It means the mastermind can kill whoever they want if they feel like it. Wait, but doesn't that create another contradiction? The mastermind wanted to use the class trial to kill you because they didn't interfere, right? You're right, that is a contradiction. And it's not just Mukuro. They needed the class trial to kill me, but seemed ready to kill you in your room. Everything they did is a contradiction. So what does it all mean? It means that the mastermind is the one who's been cornered. What? Just a little more. A little more and I should be able to figure out the mastermind's identity. The identity of the other ultimate despair. The other ultimate despair? There's no doubt that Mukuro was the ultimate despair, and that she's dead. But I don't think the ultimate despair is just one person. It's not? Yeah. If you think about it, the ultimate despair seems to implicate whoever caused that event. You're talking about... So. What happened a year ago, the biggest, most awful, most tragic event in human history. The tragedy. Whoever's responsible for that, they're the ultimate despair? So, yeah. That despicable group whose only purpose and motivation comes from despair. Then they're, make no mistake, they're the root of all the evil that's been forcing us to go through this. That is the ultimate despair. 
and that is our real enemy. Got an item! The Dream Island Rocket. Uh, okay. The Ultimate Despair. A group of people who caused the tragedy one year ago. Those same people put together this killing game and began broadcasting it around the world. The most desperately awful group of people ever. That is the Mastermind's true identity. Our enemy has finally been revealed. Not really. <laughs> but right now... Right now we have to get out of this horrible place. Figuring out who the rest of the story is can come after. Yeah, you're right. So, I have a theory that it doesn't have to be that the, the assailant got killed. It could have been that the mastermind killed Mukuro. Or it doesn't mean Mukuro was the... The mastermind could have put the person who was killed in his costume. Or maybe that's what they were saying, I don't know. It's locked, but we have a way to open this door. Oh yeah. Kyoko, do you still have that one thing? Monokuma's secret tool that you got from the headmaster's room? Hey. Of course I do. It's an absolutely vital part of ensnaring the mastermind. I would never part with it. And it can open any door in the school, right? So, yeah. That's right. Then we should be able to use it on that door. Hey Kyoko, we can use that key of yours to open this door, right? So Let's find out. Kyoko took out the key with the Monokuma design on it and slid it into the keyhole. And then... Got him! Yes, it opened! Yeah. And now we can get out of here. Let's go. Sounds good. We quickly opened the door and made our escape from the garbage pit. Finally, we were finally free, but there wasn't even time to take a breath of relief, because the real fight had just begun. The ultimate pain, the ultimate suffering, ultimate despair, ultimate execution, ultimate death. Wow. That sounds pretty final. After leaving the garbage pit, we found ourselves in a tunnel extending straight up like a chimney. There was a metal ladder leading up to the tunnel. We started climbing the ladder, intent on reaching the surface. The ladder was impossibly long. I couldn't even see where it ended. What a thrill. We climbed into darkness. The passage was so dark and cramped, I couldn't even see my own feet beneath me. I had no idea we were so far down. No. Don't lose your footing. If you slip, I won't be able to catch you. Yeah, I'll be careful. But now that you said that, I'm getting kind of nervous. Maybe talking will help keep my mind off it. So, Kyoko, there's something I wanted to ask you. You said you're the ultimate detective, right? So, how long have you been doing this? How long? Soreba. Ever since I can remember. I come from a long line of detectives. Detective work is in my blood. There was a time when being a detective was considered a sacred duty. My family's always seen it that way. Then, is your family famous? Jigawa. Quite the opposite, actually. Even among actual detectives, many people haven't heard of us. But how come? It's like your family tradition, right? So, so. because we take pride in it. Pride. Yeah. A detective is neither light nor shadow. We represent neither justice nor evil. That's how we can uncover the absolute truth. We stand neutral in all things, and to do that, we have to stand separate from the rest of society. Which is why we've made a conscious effort to conceal our existence. A conscious effort? <laughs> Makoto is looking right at Kyoko's butt in this shot. Makoto, behave yourself! So, yeah. It's kind of like old-fashioned, and I can't say that it's entirely rational. But it's our family creed, and we do what we must to protect it. Because like I said, it's our source of pride. Pride? So that explains... Before I came here, when I was looking up info about the school online, I never saw anything about her. Because she hid herself on purpose, to protect the pride of her family. Demo. And yet, I gave up some of that pride. Huh? Watashiwa. In order to enter Hope's Peak, I had to reveal myself to the school. I did it knowing it was something a true Kirigiri detective would never do. But the reason you gave up that pride... 
the reason you go so far to enter Hope's Peak is because that's how much you wanted to reconnect with your dad, right? There's no shame in that. Huh? Reconnect? I had absolutely no desire to reconnect with my father. Huh? But you'd be reuniting after all those years, right? You would have so much to talk about. There's nothing I want to talk to my father about. There is something I want to say to him, though. What? No matter what it takes, I have to find him and tell him face to face. What is it, though? I want to sever all ties with him. Sever? The last time I saw him, I was still very young, so I don't remember myself. But apparently he was extremely intelligent. He was in line to become the next head of the Kirigiri family. He was talented, and he had a promising future. But he had no interest in detective work, so he cut himself off from the family. Not long after that, my mother died, and he simply ran away. He went to my grandfather, and they had a huge argument. And young as I was, he left me behind. Well, I'm sure there was a reason for that. I'm sure your dad wanted to take you with him. So? If that's true, then I need to thank him. Thank him for leaving me. Because unlike him, I take pride in the work I do. I take pride in my family name. So every last part of me is happy he didn't take me with him. If I'd gone with him, I never would have had the chance to become a detective. I was above Kyoko on the ladder, so I wasn't able to see her expression. So I couldn't tell. I couldn't see how she looked when she said that, what she might have been feeling. All I could tell was that compared to her usual self, she was more talkative and more emotional. I don't blame him, you know. He had his own life to live. That's what anyone in my position might say, right? But it's not true. There's one thing, one thing I can never forgive, though. Really? The way everyone else looked at me. I was never sad about being left behind. Like I said, I think it was a good thing. But when the rest of my family looked at me, they saw something different. They only saw me as the little girl that was abandoned by her father. That's how they see me even to this day. His shadow has been following me in my entire life. I'm sick of it. I need him out of my life. I need to step out of his shadow. So. That's why I have to find him and tell him we're no longer family in order to settle the past. In order to remove him from my life forever. I have no doubt he forgot about me years ago. But your family, to just cut him out like that. Our only connection is through blood, nothing more. Are we connected by heart and soul? No. Ne. Is blood really enough to call someone family? Only connected by blood, not heart or soul. I was so shocked to hear her say something like that. I didn't know how to respond. So instead, I just said nothing. I just kept climbing the ladder in complete silence. And after I don't know how long, we finally reached the top. Looks like this is it. Hey. On the other side of this door, Hope's Peak is waiting for us. We're back. So you. Remember the hatch on the ground near the trash room? I'm fairly certain that that's where we'll come out. I unlocked it earlier, so it should open without much trouble. <laughs> Good, that would be bad. Well, here goes nothing. I reached my right hand up and pushed up against the hatch. The hatch opened without, with ease, and so... Looks like we're back. <sighs> oh, but I can't believe how long that ladder was. I'm exhausted. I can't say we're safe and sound, but at least we're out of here. Now we're back in Hope's Peak Academy. Kyoko, thank you. I never would have gotten out of there without you. <laughs> no thanks necessary. I was just returning the favor. This is how he got out of the garbage pit. I never would have imagined this is where this led. So now what do we do? I'm glad I didn't die, of course, but if the mastermind finds out, then I'm worried about you too. You helped me, so they might... Yeah. You're worried? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Then let's just get a concrete answer. Huh? Tsumai. Let's ask Monokuma if there's a problem with you escaping. W wait, that's... Demo. If we try to hide, it's only a matter of time till we're found out, and it's not like we can run away. As she said that, she pointed at the nearby surveillance camera. So you're saying rather than stressing out over getting caught, we should just give up now. Don't worry. What you think is going to happen isn't. Because the mastermind is the one that's ensnared. The mastermind is ensnared. You said something like that before. What does it mean? The mastermind stood exposed during the investigation into Mercura's death. There was a moment where the mastermind let their guard down. There was? So. If we can talk to Monokuma, we can confirm it. 
and it'll be better for us if you go to him directly before he tracks us down. That should help with our negotiations. I'm still a little, you know, I'm super uneasy about this. But we don't really have a choice, do we? Yeah. Monokuma should be in the gym. Let's get going. Shouldn't we uh, shut this trap door? <laughs> I guess not. Let's see who else is around. Hmm? Nobody. How would a kid be an ultimate detective, though? Like, what is she detecting? Does she have an agency? Curious about that one. Kyoko, I don't mind so much. But Makoto is supposed to be dead! What's he doing here? That's exactly how I thought he'd react. Are we gonna be okay? You were supposed to be punished! Did Kyoko help you? So what if I did? What'll you do? If the guilty party is exposed during the class trial, they alone will be executed. It's unfortunate, but that is the rule. So now I gotta punish you again! And this time, I won't leave anything to chance. K Kyoko, do whatever you feel you have to. What? But before you do, let me just say one thing. If you execu execute Makoto, that means you lose. Not that that matters to you, right? Huh? I lose? You! Explain yourself! What do you mean by that? Well, you set up this latest class trial yourself, right? I was getting in your way, so you wanted an excuse to kill me. I was supposed to be the chosen as the blackened, and then executed, right? Mm. Hey, what are you talking about? Demo. But when Makoto chose to overlook my lie, your plan came crashing down. The results of the trial weren't at all what you were expecting, <laughs> because you never imagined that in that position, one person would protect another like that. So. And in response to that unexpected development, so. you reacted by proclaiming Makoto the blackened and trying to execute him. You made the choice out of desperation. No more than that. You must have realized that Makoto, who refused to be manipulated, was a threat to you as well. Uh. But then there was another unexpected development waiting for you. An entity that would throw a wrench, so to speak, in your pre precious execution machinery. Alter Ego. <laughs> you never imagined the possibility of a being that could come to our aid even after you killed it. <laughs> now here's the absolute truth. Makoto didn't kill Mukuro, you did. Ah! So executing Makoto for it would surely be a violation of your rules, which I know you love so much. If the blackened is exposed, they alone will be executed. That's what you told us, right? Aww. Huh. And that means I lose? You talk a big game. You're saying the blackened is me and not Makoto? Yeah. And you can prove this, right? So. No, I can't. Don't just say it like that. What? Is, is this a comedy routine? To make such bold claims without a shred of evidence? I don't have any right now, but with a little more time, I guarantee I'll find more. Because no matter how deeply you try to bury it, there's only ever one absolute truth. And now you're trying to talk like some kind of famous detective type? If Makoto really was the killer, he never would have come to you willingly like this. He would have feared for his life, feared another execution. He would have tried to run and hide. He would have been gripped by the despair you love so to inspire. Demo. But here we are, confronting you with nothing but hope in our hearts. And that's supposed to be enough to convince me in the absence of evidence? Yeah. It's not you I'm trying to convince. No. If you were to execute Makoto now, everyone out there watching this would be extremely displeased. Huh? So you Imagine what everyone out there would think if you killed Makoto. They would assume that you killed him because what we said is exactly right. Despair can never kill hope. Of course, you can say we're just making this all up. You're welcome to prove us wrong. No, you have no choice but to prove it. 
because if you kill Makoto without proving your own innocence, you'll be accepting your own defeat. If you want to earn our despair, fair and square, then I suggest you take my advice. So, what's this advice of yours? To do Makoto's, oh, Mukuro's trial over again. Only this time, you follow the school regulations to ensure a fair trial. It's time for one last showdown. One... Oops. Well, that would make for a proper climax, wouldn't you say? Fair trial. One last showdown. In other words, this would be our chance to expose the true identity of Mukuro's killer, of the mastermind themselves. But what reason would the mastermind have to accept the challenge? They'll probably just execute me without another word. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting indeed. Barry? Oh, I was getting bored. So I decided to change things up a little. So time for bear jokes. Now, what you've suggested might be plausible. It would certainly make for one honey of a climax. Does that mean you accept? If we do things your way, that'll be enough to convince you and the viewers, right? And it would cause you unbearable despair, right? Then I'm prepared to agree to your terms. Will your hope win out, or will my despair claim victory? Let's have one final grisly showdown! He agreed. Then we still have a shot at this. But this is the long-awaited climax, right? Just guessing the killer is barely a fitting end. So for this final face-off, you'll have to unearth all the mysteries that have been buried here. All the mysteries? That's right. Every last mystery that's pawing around the school. If you can do that, then that'll be enough to qualify as a victory for you. That's what we've been trying to do all along. Okay, well, good. Then let's bear it all. If you can claw your way to the truth of Mukuro's death and solve the mysteries of this school, then you win. But if you can't do all that, we'll all face execution, right? <laughs> I can barely contain my excitement. When you learn the whole truth, what kind of despair will you show me? <laughs> We're as excited as you are, I'm sure. When we've uncovered every last truth, how will the ultimate despair reveal their own despair? I honestly can't believe how this has all turned out. Nah. But before we get started, I want to clarify one more thing. Do you remember the rule? When one student kills another, that's when a class trial is held. Oh, I remember that for sure. So what? Nah. Well, I just want to confirm that is what you said, right? And it's a true statement? <laughs> you don't have to be so suspicious. I've said it before, but it bears repeating. Everything is based on the school regulations. And having a trial for Mukuro is no exception to that. Huh? Mukuro's trial is no exception? Then it's part of the regulations? Which would have to mean that whoever killed Mukuro... <laughs> it's a very polarizing approach, I know. But, okay, enough puns. Anyway, here's a hint. I'm sure I told you this already, but... This killing game began with 16 participants. All of them high school students. And the only people to take a single step in Hope Speak Academy since the killing game began are those 16 students. What? Yeah. Are you telling the truth? Why do you go quiet all of a sudden? <laughs> I'm done talking. I got nothing left to say to you. So get lost, would ya? Why so mad? He seems emotionally unstable. Leave me alone. Get out of here. Okay, I'm going. There's just... You really gonna let me go? Huh, I don't even care anymore. You're all gonna get your punishment later anyway. I need to start getting it ready. A super duper extra special punishment. Overflowing with despair. <laughs> Come on, Makoto, let's go. Okay. <laughs> Monokuma's unstable laughter seemed to cling to us as we walked away, and just like that we were out of the gym. I could hardly believe it, but somehow I ended up not getting executed. I still had my life and we still had a chance. 
Overall, things turned out way better than expected. Once again, I was in Kyoko's debt. Ladies and gents, that was a heck of a ride right there. It seems like the climax is fast approaching, but with that, we're gonna have to call it for this Danganronpa episode. Thank you everybody for joining. Don't forget to stay subscribed on the YouTube channel or get subscribed if you're not already to see these episodes as they come out. It's every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, four times a week, every single week. I'll see you guys next time for the next one, but until then, bye-bye.